So what is market impact and why does it arise? I'm going to look at some of the causes for it and some ways to try to get around it. Though I'm coming at this from someone who has worked briefly in algorithmic trading, I've also published a peer-reviewed article on VWAP or Volume Weighted Average Price Algorithms, and I've co-authored a chapter on market microstructure. So I know a little bit about market impact and how to avoid it. So basically market impact arises where your trade shifts share prices. It can arise when you have a large sell or a large purchase of shares. Now it arises for a few major reasons, but there are two that are primary here. Firstly, liquidity, secondly, signaling. The liquidity reason is basically that when you're selling shares or buying shares, there's only so many counterparties that are willing to trade at the prevailing market price. Once you've exhausted those parties, you need to go through the order book and trade at a less favorable price. So if you're trying to sell a lot of shares, you'll be able to find some counterparties who are willing to buy at the market price, but then other counterparties will be buying at less favorable prices from you. This effectively causes the price that you get to shift downwards. Similarly, if you're going to purchase a large block, only so many people who are willing to sell to you at the prevailing market price. So that liquidity factor can cause market impact. The other major driver, of course, is signaling. So when someone sells or buys a large block of shares, other market participants who don't really know what is going on might infer information about the true value of the underlying stock. So for example, is market participants, when they see a large sale, might infer that it's from an institutional investor who has discovered new information or undertaken new research that means that company isn't worth as much as it's currently trading at, hence the large sale. So this is going to cause other participants to start to revalue the firm as well, causing the company's share price to go down when they see a large sale. Again, conversely, with a large purchase, they might start reevaluing the company upwards when they see a large purchase, thinking that it's a positive signal about the company. In either case, there'd be a shift in the price of the firm. So that's two major reasons for market impact, liquidity and signaling. Both of those could be at play. The relevant importance of them is going to depend a lot on the liquidity of the company, the size of the trade, and to some extent whether other people know about anything else going on with the firm. So that's what market impact generally involves. The next question is, well, how might one go about avoiding it? And is it really an important consideration? Well, it is an important consideration because it can clearly influence how much you end up getting for the purchase or for the sale. Now, in order to try to get around it, often algorithmic trading comes into play. Algorithmic trading tries to avoid market impact costs. It basically does this by splitting up trades throughout the day. Now, there's multiple ways of doing this, many of which are quite complex, but there are two that are relatively straightforward that one would often see mentioned. Firstly, you've got things like TWAP algorithms or time-weighted average price algorithms, and then secondly, VWAP algorithms or volume-weighted average price algorithms. So the basic way these try to work is they trade more shares at periods of liquidity and avoid troughs in liquidity. So you're trading more when there's more counterparties and less when there are fewer counterparties. The reason for this is twofold. Firstly, A, there's more liquidity at those times. And secondly, B, you're more able to disguise your trade if you're trading when there's a lot of other traders also trading. All right, so say we look at TWAP algorithms. These are the most simplistic. They basically trade uniformly throughout the day. So they take the bundle of shares you want to buy or sell, split it up evenly in each interval during the day. So for example, if there are five trading hours, uh, you would split up your trade into 20% of each of those trading hours. It's really, really simple. Uh, it's uniform distribution of trades during the day. VWAP algorithms are a little more, more complex. VWAP algorithms basically look at the general underlying volume dynamics, and they look historically at how much trade has occurred during given times in the day. And you split up the trade you want to do in proportion to how much trade would ordinarily occur in that time. So for example, for most firms, you'll have more trade occurring in the beginning and more trade at the end and less trade in the middle. So a VWAP algorithm is going to end up trading more of, your un more of your total trade at the beginning and the end of the day and less during the middle of the day. The basic goal here is to try to trade more when you've got a period of liquidity or more trade going on and less during that trough in the middle of the day. So that's what algorithmic trades and algorithmic trading tries to do to try to minimize market impact. Now, there are a myriad more complex ways of doing this, but those are just two examples. So market impact is an important consideration that one needs to bear in mind, and it's important to try to minimize it through things like algorithmic trading. So I hope this has given you a bit of an idea about what market impact is, why it's important, and the cost that it might incur and impose upon traders when they're trying to trade a large block of shares. Now, another way one might try to get around it is through dark pools. Dark pools are effectively a little bit more complex. They're effectively an environment where one can trade with relative anonymity. 
There's relatively limited information about the order book, so therefore it was very difficult to see how much and who is trading what at any given point in time. One will just see a trade coming through in this dark pool. Effectively, it enables you to try to disguise your large block trade. It's kind of analogous to historically when you get over-the-counter trades that were much less, much less easy to detect. It effectively enables one to try to avoid signaling to the market that you have a large trade and enables you to try to avoid some of the liquidity costs that would arise. Obviously, that will function in a slightly different way from an ordinary algorithm, and it can often be a little bit more complex and often only really open to people who have some form of institutional background because they generally run through brokers themselves. So that would be another avenue. Nevertheless, I hope this video has given you an idea about market impact costs and why they're important and what one can do to try to mitigate them. I hope the video has been interesting to you. If it has, it would be great if you click the like and subscribe buttons, and I hope to see you next time. Bye.